most honeybee species are adapted to a pollinator lifestyle with multiple traits that have evolved as a result of a long association with plants. From morphology to behavior, honeybees have many interesting adaptations. Because these bees are so important to humans, they are one of the most well-studied insects in the world. Let's explore some of these strange honeybee adaptations, starting with their mouth parts. As you may recall, honeybees have specialized chewing and lapping mouth parts with their labium modified into a tongue-like structure. It is essentially an extendable proboscis that can taste and lap up nectar. Bees also have mandibles that they use to build, maintain, and defend their hives. Honeybees don't just feed on nectar, but pollen as well. Like many pollinators, they are covered in hair-like structures that assist in the collection and transport of pollen. They also have pollen baskets on the tibia of their hind legs into which they can pack pollen for easy transport. In order to find flowers efficiently, honeybees need excellent vision. Honeybee eyes are adapted to see well into the UV spectrum, allowing them to detect nectar guides on flowers, which are invisible to the human eye. They also use specialized receptors that detect polarized light to orient with respect to the sun when it is not visible. This gives honeybees their own personal map, allowing them to navigate across a landscape, which is critical for efficient foraging. In addition to the adaptations for pollination, honeybees have other interesting physiological traits. As we mentioned earlier, some honeybees are able to generate body heat to warm the hive over the winter months. They do this by decoupling the flight muscles from the wings and vibrating them without moving their actual wings. This can raise the body temperature of the bees by 10 degrees Celsius. The ability to generate heat can also be an important defense mechanism. Asiatic honeybees can surround nest intruders, such as the giant Asian hornet, and vibrate their thoracic muscles. This raises the temperature and carbon dioxide levels around the hornet, since they are covered with vibrating bees. While the bees can tolerate the higher temperatures, the hornets cannot, and the intruders essentially cook and suffocate at the same time. Finally, all honeybees have retained an important defense mechanism from their wasp ancestors, the stinger. The stinger is a modified ovipositor which injects venom, so it is only present in females. Unfortunately for the bees, hive defense comes at a price. When bees sting, the barbed stingers become lodged within the target. When the bee pulls away, the stinger is torn from the bee's abdomen and with it, major internal organs. This abdominal trauma kills the bee. Honeybees must defend their hives to protect the brood and the precious honey stores. It is no easy task to make honey out of nectar. To produce a single kilogram of honey requires over 10,000 worker bees to visit anywhere from two to eight million flowers total. During these visits, a bee fills her crop or the honey stomach with nectar. By the end of her foraging journey, the bee may have visited up to 1,000 flowers and her honey stomach may weigh as much as the rest of her body. Digestive enzymes in the honey stomach work to turn the nectar into honey by breaking down the complex sugars into simple monosaccharides. To ensure the sugars have been suitably broken down, bees regurgitate the nectar into each other's mouths, with each bee adding more digestive enzymes in their own honey stomachs before the nectar is deposited into a cell. Before the bees cap the cell with wax, they flap their wings to create an airflow 
that helps to evaporate extra moisture from the watery nectar. This is important because it lowers the water content in the honey. This, combined with the acidic nature of honey, makes it inhospitable to fungi and bacteria. As workers forage and honey is stored, honeybee colonies thrive, growing larger and larger. At some point though, the hive will begin to get overcrowded. A queen bee will initiate swarming behavior when a bee colony becomes too large for the hive and there may be no room for new eggs. This is a complex process that involves the production of new queens in the old hive and the separation of workers into groups to either accompany the old queen out of the hive or to stay in the old hive and support the new queen. This process is coordinated by a change in queen pheromone throughout the hive. This change in queen pheromone stimulates workers to scout a suitable place to set up a new colony. The queen bee takes a substantial portion of the workers with her and they rest together out in the open while scouts survey the habitat. It may take hours or even days before the bees communally decide on a new nesting site and start a new colony. In the parent hive, new queen bees emerge to continue the colony and the old cells are reused. Bee swarming behavior increases the chance of human encounters with large numbers of bees. And many people are understandably frightened if they see a swarm of thousands of bees. A swarm may have 20,000 to 40,000 bees and includes the queen, workers, and many drones. Although it is always wise to maintain your distance, the bees are not usually aggressive as a swarm because they have no honey reserves or brood to defend. In fact, if you are lucky enough to see such an event, know that they will likely move on in a day or two on their own. And in many parts of North America, you can contact local beekeeper organizations so that someone can come and provide the swarm with a new nest location. As you can see, honey production and survival of the hive is a true group effort. Such cooperation is possible thanks to the complex and diverse communication methods employed by honeybees. In the next lesson, we will discuss the many different ways in which European honeybees communicate with each other.